am Bernardinelli, Bernstein, a large or cloud comet, also called C slash 2014, UN271 as of yet. I'm on my way to orbit your sun on my orbital run. Let's learn when and where I will appear in my perihelion. The first image of me was discovered in October of 2014. I was 29 AU or 4.3 billion kilometers from the sun. I was barely seen. That's about as far as Neptune's orbit. The furthest a comet has been discovered. That's where my presence was uncovered. Discovered by astronomers Pedro Bernardinelli and Gary Bernstein. With the Dark Energy Survey, or DES, they had found me in archival images from the DES at the CTI Observatory, which is located in the Coquimbo region in the country of Chile. I'm the largest or cloud comet, the biggest you humans ever saw. I'm estimated between 63 and 93 miles across unless I thought What is this or cloud anyway surrounding your sun? It's a spherical layer of icy objects outside the orbit of Neptune's run During 2021 I will approach your solar system sun at a distance of 19.5 or 20.8 AU On my run Let's take a look at the images here To see my orbit around the sun My perihelion and aphelion Are explained to you just for fun Perihelion means my closest approach to your sun As you see here and Ophelion is my furthest orbit from your sun that had just appeared. My closest approach to Earth will be made in 2031, which is just outside of Saturn's orbit. That's my perihelion. My orbital period is about 4.5 million years. My Ophelion distance is about 54,000 AU, so I hear I am sad to say that I won't enter your inner solar system I may be white, but you won't see me with your naked eye, and that's no fun I am five and a half times as long as Olympus months the solar system's tallest mountain found on Mars You've learned this in this song I am classified as a comet But what exactly is that? I'm a cosmic snowball of rock dust And different types of frozen gas I am Bernardinelli, Bernstein A large or cloud comet also called C slash 2014 UN271 as of yet I'm on my way to orbit your sun on my orbital run Let's learn when and where I will appear in my perihelion Here's the difference between these space rocks that you will see Asteroid, meteoroid, and comets, and some wood stages between These different celestial bodies are important to learn We're all part of this universe, let's give these space rocks their turn I'm an asteroid, also called a minor planet to some A rocky, airless remnant left over from our solar system's formation You can find a lot of asteroids orbiting our sun between Mars and Jupiter within the asteroid belt I run I can range in size from about 329 miles down to 33 feet small I've been here for a while I'm made up of different kinds of rocks and some have clays and metals such as nickel and iron found in frying pans or kettles here's the difference between these space rocks that you will see asteroid meteoroid and comets and some wood stages between 
These different celestial bodies are important to learn We're all part of this universe Let's give these space rocks their turn I'm a meteoroid, I'm smaller than an asteroid you see My size can range from a grain of dust to a small asteroid Yeah, that is me I orbit the sun, I'm made of minerals called silicates Which is silicone and oxygen I'm glad that you're learning this I'm also made of heavier metals like nickel and iron Let's go explore a little more about what other names I can become If I enter Earth's atmosphere you'll see a bright tail of light If this happens and I vaporize I'm called a meteor, that's right Some call me a shooting or falling star I'm only called a meteor if I burn up completely it's bizarre But if I make it through the atmosphere and reach the Earth's surface my name changes to meteorite That is important to learn this I'm a comet Which is dust mixed with frozen gas When fully frozen I'm about the size of a small town Through space I do pass I'm made of ices like water Carbon dioxide, ammonia, and methane Mixed with cosmic dust from our solar system When it began When I get close to the sun I heat up and spew dust and gas This forms a glowing tail That stretches away from the sun and as I pass a cloud forms around my nucleus from my vaporizing ice This is called a coma, it can expand 50,000 miles and it looks nice My tail that form can expand past 600,000 miles Thank you for learning about all of us, I hope we made you smile Here's the difference between these space rocks that you will see Asteroid, meteoroid, and comets, and some with stages between these different celestial bodies are important to learn We're all part of this universe Let's give these space rocks their turn I'm Comet Hellbop One of the brightest comet seen C slash 1995-01 I was designated formally I'm Comet Hellbop One of the brightest comet seen In 1995 was my discovery I was discovered by an astronomer Alan Hale and Thomas Bob, the astronomer amateur I was discovered before I was visible to the naked eye On July 23rd in 1995 Astronomers believe I originated from beyond Neptune From the Oort cloud which is 2000 to 100,000 AU My elliptical orbit is long, they can take around 200 years or even to orbit the sun, just to be clear I was one of the most widely observed comets in the 20th century In for many decades, one of the brightest seen I passed perihelion in 1997 But it is unsure when I'll reach my aphelion When I was visible to the naked eye for humans It was so much fun I was observed with the naked eye for about 18 months I may have had a near collision with Jupiter in early June 2215 BC. I'm Comet Hellbop, one of the brightest comets seen. C slash 1995-01, I was designated formally. I'm Comet Hellbop, one of the brightest comets seen. In 1995 was my discovery. I have several types of tails that trail. Let me tell you about all of them to impress they don't fail. One is called a bright dust tail created by the reflection of the sunlight from dust streaming from the comet Am I? The second is called the ion tail. It is more faint made up of electrically charged atoms. I do hell. I was discovered with a rare third tail you'll see called the sodium tail trailing from the back of me. I do estimated to be about 30 to 40 kilometers across me. I am the first comet that astronomers did detect. The noble gas argon in which I reflect. I'm Comet Hellbop, one of the brightest comets seen. C slash 1995-01, I was designated formally. I'm Comet Hellbop, one of the brightest comets seen. In 1995 was my discovery. A spherical layer of 
I see objects surrounding our sun. This is the Oort cloud, which is a theoretical concept astronomers had spun. The Oort cloud is the most distant region in the solar system. It's much farther than the Kuiper Belt. We're filling you with this wisdom. The Oort cloud's supposedly a giant spherical shell surrounding the rest of the solar system as you're propelled. There could be billions or even trillions of objects within the Oort cloud. That's what NASA projects. This Oort cloud could be the source of most comets. This is thought because of a comet's long period orbit. The distance of this Oort cloud from your sun is estimated to be 2,000 to 100,000 AU on its run. One astronomical unit or AU is the distance between Earth and the Sun like you see on your screen. This is the Oort Cloud, a spherical layer of icy objects surrounding our Sun. This is the Oort Cloud, which is a theoretical concept astronomers had spun. The first description of the Oort cloud was in 1950 by Jan Hendrik, or the Dutch astronomer you see. This Oort cloud's divided into two regions you see here, a disc-shaped inner Oort cloud and an outer Oort cloud sphere. There's never been a confirmed direct observation of the Oort cloud, so it continues to be speculation. This region's thought to have formed 4.6 billion years ago after the formation of the planets in the solar system, though. This is the Oort cloud, a spherical layer of icy objects surrounding our sun. This is the Oort cloud, which is a theoretical concept astronomers had spun. The sun, the center of your solar system. I do erupt intense high energy radiation. This radiation I expel is called the solar flare. You'll learn about them in the song and why you should care. The sun is a ball of plasma, like an extremely hot ocean shaped like a wheel. This plasma is pushed around and shaped by the sun's magnetic field. When the sun's plasma swirls around by its magnetic field, it gets twisted and releases energy around sunspots, they are real. This energy released is caused by magnetic knots. When one of these knots breaks, it releases solar flares, so you are taught. Solar flares are waves of high energy radiation shot through the solar system in which we are all one. These solar flares race through space at the speed of light, creating a solar proton storm. These storms are no delight. When millions of times Tons of plasma are thrown from the sun's atmosphere. These storms are called coronal mass ejections, as you see right here. These CMEs reach speeds of 5.6 million miles per hour. When they hit Earth, it doesn't hurt living beings even with such power. The Earth's atmosphere protects life from the biggest solar storms by absorbing the impact so beings on the surface are safe from harm. When a CME is too big, it creates a solar superstorm that occur once or twice a century. So you've been warned If a solar superstorm did happen in this day and age It would shoot billions of tons of plasma from the sun, I do say If this type of CME traveled across space towards the earth It would reach you in one day Yeah, that's fast for what that is worth Its shock wave would compress Earth's magnetic field Making it frail The two magnetic fields would merge Stretching Earth's field into a thin tail This stretch tail can't contain this energy anymore. When it snaps, it releases explosive energy towards the Earth that it stored. This creates something very rare called the geomagnetic storm. Normally, no living thing on Earth would even know it had formed. The only thing it would 
Side effect is your electricity Because you rely on this so much It would disrupt human life, you see Because Earth is covered in millions of electric wires and transformers This geomagnetic storm would shut down the power Humans would be overturned If one of these storms hit the Earth Electricity and internet would not work All things powered by electricity would turn off Along with all networks Computers wouldn't work along with phones and electronic devices No refrigerators or or any other household appliances Even though we can't stop These terrible solar storms Their nasty side effects Can be prevented by how we are warned Engineers would have a day or two To unplug major power grids Until the solar storm passes Earth Preventing blackouts we forbid Humans need to prepare For these types of storms To prevent being thrown back to the stone age Before they form A cool event humans experience From any storm Solar storm is the aurora borealis at the two poles is where they perform. I'm the life-giving sun, you all need me to live, but I am unpredictable, so solar storms I give. I am the sun, the center of your solar system. I do erupt intense high energy radiation. This radiation I expel is called the solar flare. You learn about them in the song and why you should care. Earth has a second moon, it's me, provisionally designated, 2016 HO3, Kamul Avrava is thought to be an asteroid, but that may have changed with new facts that we can avoid. I was first spotted in April of 2016 By Pan Stars Asteroid Survey Telescope You now see This telescope is located on Haleakala In Hawaii Which is all part of the Haleakala Observatory When I was discovered Orbiting the Earth In a weird way Kamu'u Alava Was the name they gave me Even though it is extremely Hard to say I am very small Compared to Earth's moon Measuring 164 feet across I'm tiny, it's true I circle the Earth in a repeating Corkscrew-like trajectory Never closer than 40 to 100 times the 239,000 mile distance of your moon, you see. I'm odd and this is why I don't reflect brightly in certain infrared frequencies or to the eye. Like other asteroids do, I'm a quirky satellite and this is true. Because of this, researchers are starting to agree I may be a chip off your known moon flying free Basically what you're seeing is a flying silicate Caused by micrometeorite impacts in the space environment It's possible when space rocks hit the moon at a high degree When I was ejected into space I am lunar debris I am a near-Earth object also known as Neo Part of a group of near-Earth asteroids called Apollo I'm an object in a specific type of cold orbital configuration with a planet I'm called a quasi-satellite I know it's weird, but I didn't plan it Earth has a second moon, it's me Provisionally designated 2016 HO3 Kamul Avrava is thought to be an asteroid But that may have changed with new facts that we can avoid I'm an exoplanet orbiting the star Caro 7 you see in the constellation of Monoceros, my name is Caro 7B. I was first detected photometrically in 2009 by the French led Caro mission in the month of February. I refined. I was discovered by a French astrophysicist named Daniel. Working as the director of research emeritus at the CNRS, it's going on. 
I'm the ISS, the International Space Station 1998 was the year that begun my construction I make multiple orbits around the Earth every day Let's learn more about my history as we orbit in space I fly around the world every 90 minutes I orbit the Earth 16 times in 24 hours, that's legit I'm 357 feet long from end to end Am I after the moon? I'm the second brightest object in your sky I have two bathrooms on board, there's also one gym I have six sleeping quarters and six spaceship docks for the win Here's a brief history about how I came to be Pay attention to my incredible collaborative construction story The idea of the space station was science fiction until the 1940s, the structure might be built by many nations. In the 1950s, designs of spaceships and space stations began to develop with the beginning of the space age and it gained traction. The first rudimentary station was created in 1969 by the linking of two Russian Soyuz vehicles in line. In 1984, the U.S. President Ronald Reagan told NASA to build the ISS for many nations. Then in 1998, the construction had begun of the only international space station. That year, the first segment of the ISS launched in November 20th by the Russian proton rocket named Zarya. It's no myth. The Unity node from the US launched December 4th by the space shuttle Endeavour set it on its course. The Endeavour met Zarya in orbit with the Unity node to make the first connection connection with the Russian segment, you know. In the year 2000, the first crew to man the space shuttle adrift was Bill Shepard, Yuri Gatsenko, and Sergei Krikalev. The US lab module was added in 2001. Then the European and Japanese lab joined in 2008, and we're not done. The ISS consists of 50 nations, Canada, Japan, and the Russian Federation, the United States, and the European Space Agency. They are Belgium, Denmark, France, Germany, and Italy. The Netherlands, Norway, Spain, and Sweden, Switzerland, and the famed United Kingdom. Maybe you will have the chance to visit me someday and be another part of the ISS and its history. I'm the ISS, the International Space Station. 1998 was the year that begun my construction. I make multiple orbits around the Earth every day. Let's learn more about my history as we orbit in space. My name is T-R-E-S-2-B I'm a gas giant too far away to see I'm the darkest exoplanet ever identified I'm a bit bigger than Jupiter I'll describe With the discovery date of August 21st in 2006 Is when they noticed me at first I was confirmed a planet on September 8th in 2006 officially my birthday 
I was discovered by an astronomer named Francis T. O'Donovan. That is for sure. First seen on the transatlantic exoplanet survey, or you could call it TRES. It's an acronym, I say. This all happened in California. You will see at the famous Palomar Observatory. My discovery also took place at the Lowell Observatory located in Arizona. Now, here's more about me. My name is T-R-E-S dash to B. I'm a gas giant too far away to see. I'm the darkest exoplanet ever identified. I'm a bit bigger than Jupiter, I'll describe. GSC 03549-02811 is the star that I orbit and a long named one. My parent star is a yellow main sequence star similar to your sun. Just to keep you on par, I belong to a constellation in the far northern sky. Its name is Draco, which is Latin for dragon, I imply. I'm 750. System. That's where I'll stay. I'm thought to be the darkest known exoplanet, reflecting less than 1% of any life that does hit. My mass and radius does indicate I'm a gas giant with a ball composition similar to Jupiter, your super giant. I'm likely to be tidally locked to my parent star. I'm extremely dark and completely my name is T-R-E-S dash to B. I'm a gas giant too far away to see. I'm the darkest exoplanet ever identified. I'm a bit bigger than Jupiter, I'll describe. Telescope 
open the James Webb telescope, that's me. We're here to tell you about us and what we can see. After decades of planning and research, I was finally finished and launched in 1990 as NASA had wished. I orbit 340 miles above Earth's surface to do my thing. Powered by solar power, collected by my two solar powered wings. I'm the length of a large school bus and weigh as much as two elephants, making more than a million observations while traveling five miles per second. I take sharp pictures of objects in the sky, such as galaxies, planets, and stars, and transmit them back to Earth for you to see. Earth's telescopes are blocked by the atmosphere to see light from space. I orbit above this atmosphere to give a clear view of my star chase. My achievements are pinning down the age of the universe, and I discovered two moons of Pluto, Nix, and Hydra, of course. I've helped determine the rate of which the universe is expanding in whole, and discovered nearly every major galaxy is anchored by a black hole. The James Webb Telescope is an infrared space observatory launched in 2021 for space exploration. You see, I'm here to probe the cosmos and uncover the history of the universe from the Big Bang and alien planet formation and much more, of course. I'll take 30 days to travel a million miles to my home that's permanent, orbiting the sun aligned with the Earth to explore space is my intent. When NASA built me, $10 billion was my cost. My impressive primary mirror is 6.5 meters across. It has 18 segments in a honeycomb structure, I say, and I am powered by an onboard solar array. The solar array provides me with 2,000 watts of electrical power and a propulsion system to maintain my observatory orbit by the hour. I have enough propellant on board to last 10 years of operation to give a better understanding of the universe to every nation. I can see 13 billion light years back in time, which is 100 million years after the universe was born. I do refine. We're important because we give a view of space that is clear, orbiting above Earth's foggy atmosphere. We're the Hubble Space Telescope and the James Webb Telescope, that's me. We're here to tell you about us and what we can see. in 1972 
astronauts explored the lunar highlands, this is true. In 72, Apollo 17 was launched and nothing went wrong. This marks the last walk on the moon, since then no one has gone. You can visit space someday and our Earth you will see. Or you can visit a different planet and make history. The Apollo mission brought humans to the moon. The first flight was in the 1960s, we hope to go back soon. This is the Aurora Borealis or the Northern Lights In the night sky you can see the waves of dancing light Where are the Northern Lights? Where can they be seen? In the North or South Magnetic Poles is where you'll see their sheen The Aurora Borealis is caused by electrically charged particles Colliding into Earth's atmosphere from the sun with some pole What causes these colors? You can see in the sky And where are these particles? When a solar wind is shot from the hot burning sun Out into space in all directions This solar wind is full of electrons and proton gas you know But it's mostly made of electrons shot from the sun that glows When solar wind shot towards the earth These particles travel at speeds over a million miles per hour Towards Earth's atmosphere you see They can take two to four days for these particles to reach Reach Earth, they're pushed to Earth's magnetic fields To the North and South Poles, protecting you like a shield I'm an electron and I'm about to reach the Earth's North Pole Falling from high energy to normal energy, I'll show When I reach this normal energy, I produce a photon This is where things get interesting, you'll learn in this song When a photon hits Earth's atmosphere, which is made up of air Which includes oxygen and nitrogen, the gases that that will flare. I am oxygen when a photon collides with me. I spark the color in the aurora that is seen as green. My name is nitrogen, and when a photon does hit me in the Earth's atmosphere, my color is blue. It's what you'll see. These greens and blues come in different shades, you see. Called the aurora borealis, nature's light show we be. These reactions do take place 60 to 300 miles in the atmosphere. A safe since you can observe this color show very clear What other planets have an aurora borealis in their poles? Saturn and Jupiter have some of these strong light shows What places in the north can you see the aurora geographically? Alaska, Canada, and Scandinavia are just three See the aurora borealis is cousin in Antarctica glow But it goes by the name of aurora australis as shown Galileo did coin the term aurora he coined this term in 1619 because of the color burst Next time you see the aurora borealis, now you will know Just how this natural phenomenon produces a light show This is the aurora borealis, or the northern lights In the night sky you can see the waves of dancing light Where are the northern lights, where can they be seen? In the north or south magnetic poles is where you'll see their sheen of Chile, you know. Scott Shepard discovered me using the Dark Energy Survey, or DES for short. In space, I'm on display. I was discovered at apparent magnitude 19 from the Earth. Let me explain just what that means. Apparent magnitude is a measure of the brightest of a star or other astronomical object observed from Earth so far. I am 2021 P. 27. I am currently the new closest object to the sun. 
I stole Mercury's status of the sun's closest object I'm here to prove this to you after my facts are checked My perihelion is closer than Mercury at the closest orbit to the sun My aphelion is farther than Venus when my orbit is farthest from the sun I have the smallest semi-minor axis, how fun And shortest orbital period among all asteroids as of 2021 I take 113 days to orbit the sun That makes me the fastest orbiting asteroid and I'm not done I'm expected to be larger than 1 kilometer in diameter Next to Mercury's diameter of 4800 kilometers I'm smaller, professionally designated 2021 PH 27 while orbiting the sun By the minor planet center on my run None of this info would be possible without astronomers Maybe you could study astronomy, it's out of this world, I'm sure I am 2021 PH 27 I am currently the new closest object to the sun I stole Mercury's status of the sun's closest object I'm here to prove this to you after my facts are checked I am 2021 PH 27 I am currently the new closest object to the sun I stole Mercury's status of the sun's closest object I'm here to prove this to you after my facts are checked I am Bernardinelli Bernstein, a large or cloud comet, also called C slash 2014 UN271 as of yet. I'm on my way to orbit your sun on my orbital run. Let's learn when and where I will appear in my perihelion. The first image of me was discovered in October of 2014. I was 29 AU or 4.3 billion kilometers from the sun. I was barely seen. That's about as far as Neptune's orbit. The furthest a comet has been discovered. That's where my presence was uncovered. Discovered by astronomers Pedro Bernardinelli and Gary Bernstein. With the Dark Energy Survey or DES, they had found me. In archival images from the DES at the CTI Observatory, which is located in the Coquimbo region in the country of Chile. I'm the largest or cloud comet, the biggest you humans ever saw. I'm estimated between 63 and 93 miles across unless I thaw. What is this or cloud anyway? Surrounding your sun It's a spherical layer of icy objects Outside the orbit of Neptune's run During 2021 I will approach your solar system sun At a distance of 19.5 or 20.8 AU On my run Let's take a look at the images here To see my orbit around the sun my perihelion and aphelion are explained to you just for fun. Perihelion means my closest approach to your sun as you see here. And aphelion is my furthest orbit from your sun that had just appeared. My closest approach to Earth will be made in 2031. Which is just outside of Saturn's orbit, that's my perihelion. My orbital period is about 4.5 million years. My aphelion distance is about 54,000 AU, so I hear. I am sad to say that I won't enter your inner solar system. I may be wide, but you won't see me with your naked eye, and that's no fun. I am five and a half times as long as Olympus months. The solar system's tallest mountain found on Mars. You've learned this in this song. I am classified as a comet, but what exactly is that? I'm a cosmic snowball of rock dust and different types of frozen gas. 
I am Bernardinelli, Bernstein, a large or cloud comet, also called C slash 2014, UN271 as of yet. I'm on my way to orbit your sun on my orbital run. Let's learn when and where I will appear in my perihelion. Here's the difference between these space rocks that you will see. Asteroid, meteoroid, and comets, and some with stages between. These different celestial bodies are important to learn. We're all part of this universe. Let's give these space rocks their turn. I'm an asteroid, also called a minor planet to some. A rocky, airless remnant left over from our solar system's formation. You can find a lot of asteroids orbiting our sun. Between Mars and Jupiter, within the asteroid belt I run. I can range in size from about 320. Nine miles down to 33 feet small I've been here for a while I'm made up of different kinds of rocks And some have clays and metals Such as nickel and iron Found in frying pans or kettles Here's the difference between These space rocks that you will see Asteroid, meteoroid, and comets And some with stages between These different celestial bodies Are important to learn We're all part of this universe Let's give these space rocks their turn. I'm a meteoroid, I'm smaller than an asteroid you see. My size can range from a grain of dust to a small asteroid, yeah that is me. I orbit the sun, I'm made of minerals called silicates, which is silicone and oxygen. I'm glad that you're learning this. I'm also made of heavier metals like nickel and iron. Let's go explore a little more about what other names I can become. If I enter Earth's atmosphere, you'll see a bright tail of light. If this happens and I vaporize, I'm called a meteor, that's right. Some call me a shooting or falling star, I'm only called a meteor if I burn up completely it's bizarre but if I make it through the atmosphere and reach the earth's surface my name changes to meteorite that is important to learn this I'm a comet which is dust mixed with frozen gas when fully frozen I'm about the size of a small town through space I do pass I'm made of ices like water carbon dioxide ammonia and methane mixed with cosmic dust from our solar system when it began When I get close to the sun I heat up and spew dust and gas This forms a glowing tail That stretches away from the sun As I pass a cloud forms around my nucleus From my vaporizing ice This is called a coma It can expand 50,000 miles And it looks nice My tail that form can expand past 600,000 miles Thank you for learning about all of us I hope we made you smile Here's the difference between These space rocks that that you will see asteroid, meteoroid, and comets, and some with stages between. These different celestial bodies are important to learn. We're all part of this universe. Let's give these space rocks their turn. I'm Comet Hammer, one of the brightest comets seen. C slash 1995-01. I was designated formally. I'm Comet Hammer. One of the brightest comets seen in 1995 was my discovery. I was discovered by an astronomer, Alan Hale and Thomas Bob, the astronomer amateur. I was discovered before I was visible to the naked eye on July 23rd in 1995. Astronomers believe I originated from beyond Neptune, from the Oort cloud, which is 2,000 to 100,000 AU. My elliptical orbit is long, they can take around 200 years or even thousands to orbit the sun, just to be clear. I was one of the most widely observed comets in the 20th century and for many decades one of the brightest seen. I passed perihelion in 1997, but it is unsure when I'll reach my aphelion. When I was visible to the naked eye for humans, it was so much fun. I was observed with the naked eye for about 18 months. I may have had a near collision with Jupiter in early June 2215 BC. I'm Comet Hammer, 
one of the brightest comic scenes C slash 199501 I was designated formally I'm Comet Hellbop One of the brightest comics seen In 1995 was my discovery I have several types of tales That trail Let me tell you about all of them To impress they don't fail One is called the Bright Dust Tale Created by the reflection of the sunlight From the streaming from the comet Am I? The second is called the Ion Tail It is more faint Made up of electrically charged atoms I do hell I was discovered with a rare third tail You'll see called the sodium tail Trailing from the back of me I do have a nucleus Which is estimated to be about 30 to 40 kilometers across me I am the first comet that astronomers did detect The noble gas argon in which I reflect I'm Comet Hellbop one of the brightest comets seen C slash 1995 I was designated formally I'm Comet Hellbop One of the brightest comets seen In 1995 was my discovery This is the Oort Cloud A spherical layer of icy objects Surrounding our sun, this is the Oort Cloud, which is a theoretical concept. Astronomers has fun. The Oort Cloud is the most distant region in the solar system. It's much farther than the Kuiper Belt. We're filling you with this wisdom. The Oort Cloud supposedly a giant spherical shell Surrounding the rest of the solar system as you're propelled There could be billions or even trillions of objects Within the Oort Cloud, that's what NASA projects This Oort Cloud could be the source of most comets This is thought because of a comet's long period orbit the distance of this Oort cloud from your sun is estimated to be 2,000 to 100,000 AU on its run. One astronomical unit, or AU, is the distance between Earth and the sun, like you see on your screen. This is the Oort cloud, a spherical layer of icy objects surrounding our sun. This is the Oort cloud. Which is a theoretical concept Astronomers had spun The first description of the Oort Cloud was in 1950 by Jan Hendrik Or the Dutch astronomer you see This Oort Cloud's divided into two regions you see here A dish-shaped inner Oort Cloud and an outer Oort Cloud sphere There's never been a confirmed direct observation of the Oort Cloud This region's thought to have formed 4.6 billion years ago After the formation of the planets in the solar system though This is the Oort Cloud A spherical layer of icy objects Surrounding our sun This is the Oort Cloud Which is a theoretical concept Astronomers had spun On the center of your solar system I do erupt intense high energy radiation This radiation I expel is called the solar flare You'll learn about them in this song And why you should care The sun is a ball of plasma Like an extremely hot ocean shaped like a wheel This plasma is pushed around and shaped by the sun's magnetic field When the sun's plasma swirls around by its magnetic field It gets twisted and releases energy around sunspots, they are real. This energy released 
is caused by magnetic knots. When one of these knots breaks, it releases solar flares, so you are taught. Solar flares are waves of high energy radiation shot through the solar system in which we are all one. These solar flares race through space at the speed of light, creating a solar proton storm. These storms are no delight. When millions of tons of plasma are thrown from the sun's atmosphere, these storms are called coronal mass ejections, as you see right here. These CMEs reach speeds of 5.6 million miles per hour. When they hit Earth, it doesn't hurt living beings even with such power. The Earth's atmosphere protects life from the biggest solar storms by absorbing the impact so beings on the surface are safe from harm. When a CME is too big, it creates a solar superstorm that occur once or twice a century, so you've been warned. If a solar superstorm did happen in this day and age, it would shoot billions of tons of plasma from the sun, I do say. If this type of CME traveled across space towards the Earth, it would reach you in one day. Yeah, that's fast for what that is worth. Its shock wave would compress Earth's magnetic field, making it frail. The two magnetic fields would merge, stretching Earth's field into a thin tail. This stretch tail can't contain this energy anymore. When it snaps, it releases explosive energy towards the Earth that it stored. This creates something very rare called the geomagnetic storm. Normally, no living thing on Earth would even know it had formed. The only thing it would affect is your electricity. Because you rely on this so much, it would disrupt human life, you see. Because Earth is covered in millions of electric wires and transformers, this geomagnetic storm would shut down the power. Humans would be overturned. If one of these storms hit the Earth, electricity and internet would not work. All things powered by electricity would turn off along with all networks. Computers would wouldn't work along with phones and electronic devices, no refrigerators or any other household appliances. Even though we can't stop these terrible solar storms, their nasty side effects can be prevented by how we are warned. Engineers would have a day or two to unplug major power grids until the solar storm passes Earth, preventing blackouts we forbid. Humans need to prepare for these types of storms to prevent being thrown back to the stone age before they form. A cool event humans experience from any solar storm is the aurora borealis at the two poles is where they perform. I'm the life-giving sun, you all need me to live, but I am unpredictable, so solar storms I give. I am the sun, the center of your solar system. I do erupt intense high energy radiation. This radiation I expel is called the solar flare you learn about them in this song and why you should care earth has a second moon it's me provisionally designated 2016 HO3 Kamu Abrava is thought to be an asteroid but that may change with new facts that we can avoid I was first spotted in April of 2016 by pan stars asteroid survey telescope you now see this telescope is located on Haleakala in Hawaii which is all Observatory When I was discovered orbiting the Earth in a weird way Kamu'u Alava was the name they gave me even though it is extremely hard to say I am very small compared to Earth's moon measuring 164 feet across I'm tiny, it's true I circle the Earth in a repeating corkscrew-like trajectory Never closer than 40 to 100 times the 239,000 mile distance of your moon, you see I'm odd and this is why I don't reflect brightly in certain infrared frequencies or to the eye like other asteroids do I'm a quirky satellite
and this is true Because of this, researchers are starting to agree I may be a chip off your known moon flying free Basically what you're seeing is a flying silicate Caused by micrometeorite impacts in the space environment It's possible when space rocks hit the moon at a high degree When I was ejected into space I am lunar debris I am a near-Earth object also known as Neo Part of a group of near-Earth asteroids called Apollo I'm an object in a specific type of core orbital configuration with a planet I'm called a quasi-satellite I know it's weird, but I didn't plan it Earth has a second moon, it's me Provisionally designated 2016 HO3 Kamu Abrava is thought to